Okay, well, thanks for watching the Jerry Rigger channel. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, today's video is all about making a freezer alarm. And you're probably watching this video because you have $500 worth of bad meat in your freezer right now because nothing alarmed you to let you know your freezer stopped working. Well, today I'm going to make a freezer alarm. I'll go ahead and put a quick diagram and the parts I used, all of which I bought on Amazon, at the end of the video. Uh, so once again, thanks for liking and subscribing. So let's go ahead and get started with the intro and the disclaimer. And I ordered these off of Amazon. Um, this is just like a nine volt battery case. It has a on off switch, right? So you can turn it on and off. Um, also has a place for a screw. The screws come, well, comes in this bag. The screws come in a separate bag, in the bag. Um, so that way you can, um, you know, once you, after you put it on, you can put a screw in there to, you know, keep kids out of the battery area. Um, I was kind of a little bit concerned when I first got it because I saw this. I thought maybe it might have been glued in, um, but I was able to pry it up on this other one. I know. Um, pry it up so I can pull this out, right? So I have access to in here, which is great because the little speaker that I purchased, I want to be able to hook this up inside of you know i'm going to drill a little hole in the side over here and i'll glue this right onto the side maybe drill, drill two small holes since uh the t they're not quite lined up but i want to be able to glue that onto the side um tie it right into the battery um, now this is a zero degree uh, thermostat auto resetting now ideally what we would want to do is actually you know tie this on to the freezer from you know drill a hole through the side of the freezer but nobody wants to drill a hole in the front side of their freezer right um, so I what I'm gonna do um, is I'm probably gonna hook this on to a piece of aluminum or something as for now, it's probably just going to be hanging down inside the freezer. Um, we'll, we'll test it. We'll put it in the freezer. We'll let it get down to zero. We'll um, pull it out, let it set off the alarm, then put it back in the freezer again. Um, let it get down to zero, pull it out, you know, test the alarm. Uh, th this seemed pretty loud, um, decibel wise, compared to some of the other ones for its size. That's why I purchased this one. I wanted something small I could attach right onto the to the side, glue right onto the side of here. Um, not going to cause much interference, right? Oh, 6 to 12 volt. Okay. Um, 85 decibels, it says. So it's pretty, like I say, for its size, uh, pretty loud. Um, you know, if I, I wanted to get something bigger, I probably could have gone louder, but I didn't. I wanted something small, like I say, I can go on to the side. So, um, but I'll be, I'll be able to get all this inside here. Like I say, I think that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then from there, um, I'll hook this on to either end of that. And it, I mean, it should be pretty simple design, right? And the nice thing about this design um, this, this is normally open and it closes at, you know, zero degrees, right? So I should be, it should be closed right now and should open up once I put it inside the freezer and it gets, comes down to temperature. So this right now is giving me full electric flow. Once I put it in the freezer, it should open up and there should be no more flow of current. And I, I like this design. It's not going to run the battery down. I mean, the batteries eventually go down, dead by themselves, just um, not being connected up to anything. That's why they go bad over time. But um, that should give me, you know, 
long life and if you put a date on here when you replace the battery you probably get a couple years out of a battery right now i'm just trying to get the wires out of the way so i don't accidentally drill through them So that's what it'll look like. I got that black epoxy. I'm gonna put right there. All right, so I'll let that dry. I had the cap, what the heck did I do with that? Lose my head if it was not attached. What are you doing? Soldering. What do you say? I'm soldering. Soldering? Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and desolder this wire. Now I have what they call pre-tinning. Um, I've, I've tinned the, in other words, I, I put solder already on the wire, ends of the wires. Um, and that way when I can go ahead and just, you know, I don't have to try and hold the solder and, um, you know, hold the uh, wire at the same time. Um, I can just take the pre-soldered wire and, and, and melt the two you know, the two pre-soldered pieces together. Uh, it just makes it a little easier to solder. All right, so now I'm gonna connect the uh, black wire that was originally on the battery pack to the red wire um, coming from the speaker. And the reason for that is I need to make sure that red wire is going towards the positive because the speaker, uh, it is polarity sensitive. So I can only, it'll only work if the red is on the positive and the black is on the negative. I can't switch those two leads around. All right, so now I've got the the uh, red wire onto the black wire that was going to the switch, and the black wire from the speaker is now going to where the black wire originally was on the switch. So uh, now I'm just going to put this heat shrink tubing on here.
connectors I'm going to use for these wires are actually meant for uh, a heavier gauge wire. Um, so what I'm going to do when I strip this back is I'm going to fold it over and then I'll go ahead and crimp it on or I'll go ahead and just make sure I get a good connection. I'll go ahead and solder it on as well. Just going to go ahead and put some heat shrink over these uh, connectors as well. Alright, so I did attach this piece of aluminum onto the front of it, um, and the reason I did that, uh, two reasons, um, it keeps the metal plate that is meant to attach onto something, um, it keeps that from, you know, coming back and running into the um, terminals and shorting out the terminals and setting off a false alarm. Another thing um, this does, like right now, I've got this open right now. This thing's turned on right now, but this is open. That aluminum is going to take a lot longer. to. So as this warms up, because I've got this open, I didn't want it to, again, trigger. I wanted to be able to open it and close it, open it and close it, um, and not set off the alarm. So I attached a little piece of aluminum uh, just to keep it from getting warm too quick um, while you have the door open, getting stuff in and out. Um, Ideally, this would be better mounted. Okay, so um, I did go ahead and add a magnet. As you can see, I put a little cutout on the magnet for the um, screw because that's how you get the battery cover off, right? You have to slide that off. Um, so I wanted to make sure we could get to the screw, so now we just slide that off after you take the screw out. Um, I also, you know, I, I cut the paper off just where I wanted to glue it on. I left most of the paper on um, because it kind of matches the side of the, the freezer anyway. Um, so that's it. Um, I, think, uh, I think we have a winner. All right, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I need as many subscribers as possible. That little alarm, hopefully the next time uh, something happens will we'll warn us that the freezer is not turned on. As promised, here's a little diagram as well as uh, all the uh, you know, different parts that I used, except, with the exception of the connectors. Um, but you can get those at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Um, I purchased, again, I purchased all this on Amazon. Uh, once again, thanks for uh, liking and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.